Let me show you how to attract great crested flycatchers to nest in your yard. I'm Jeff with the Backyard Birds Channel. The great crested flycatcher is a cavity nesting bird that breeds across eastern North America. They can be attracted to nest in your yard by erecting a nest box that meets their nesting requirements. I will show you their preferred nest box, mounting method, and recommendations for success, as well as active flycatcher nests. If you want to see more videos like this, consider subscribing to my channel. Look for the great crested flycatcher in roughly the eastern half of North America. The similar ash-throated flycatcher can be found in the southwestern United States and Mexico. Find links in the video description to range maps for the great crested and ash-throated flycatchers. This video focuses on the great crested flycatcher, but most of what I cover applies to the ash-throated flycatcher as well. They usually nest in natural cavities in trees, but will use nest boxes. A nest box is a more appropriate name for a birdhouse, as they are only used for nesting. Great crested flycatchers winter in Central America and migrate to their breeding grounds each spring. In the fall, they return to Central America, so they are generally only seen during the breeding season. They are very vocal birds and you'll often hear them before you see them. They spend most of their time high in the treetops, but if you get them to nest, you will see them more often. For brevity, let's call them flycatchers in the rest of the video. Flycatchers are late nesters compared to the more commonly hosted eastern bluebirds. My experience with them is from Topeka in northeastern Kansas. Eastern bluebirds usually are nesting about the middle of April in Topeka, but flycatchers don't begin nesting until the end of May into June. Depending where you live in their range, expect them to nest earlier or later. Let's look at the nest box characteristics for flycatchers. They are relatively large birds and need a 2 inch diameter hole to allow them to enter. The box should have a 5 to 6 inch square base and be about 10 to 11 inches deep. It should be front side or top opening to allow monitoring. I prefer a front opening. The nest box can also be used to trap invasive starlings and house sparrows which will nest in boxes for flycatchers. My boxes are made from 1 inch pine. I use 8 inch wide boards for the left and right and 6 inch boards for the front and back. The bottom is also a 6 inch board. The top is a 10 inch wide board which allows an overhang on all sides of the box. There is a groove cut in the edges of the top board to act as a drip line for the rain. I cut the four sides to be about 12 inches long to make a 10 to 11 inch deep box as the floor is recessed. A 2 inch diameter hole is cut in the front of the box about an inch from the top. Add screws for the nest box trap which you will use to control invasive starlings and house sparrows. The sharp edges of the hole are sanded smooth. The box is fastened together with number 6, 1 and 5 8 construction screws. I place the two screws in the front of the box to act as a hinge. A list of items used to make the box can be found in the video description. The nest box must be mounted on a 10 foot pole as that is the minimum height flycatchers prefer to nest. I've experimented with different methods and found a 10 foot telescoping pole with a predator baffle to be the best option. The telescoping pole allows you to monitor the nest box without having to climb a ladder. Learn how to mount the nest box on a 10 foot telescoping pole by following the mounting link at the top of this video. A baffle is required to prevent predators from climbing the pole and destroying the nest. Learn how to make a predator baffle by following the baffle link at the top of the video. Do not mount the nest box to a tree as the box will not be safe from climbing predators. These are important tips to follow if you want to be successful. Obviously you need to live where flycatchers are breeding birds. Look for links in the video description for range maps of the great crested and ash-throated flycatchers. Put up more than one nest box for flycatchers as you can't predict which box they will prefer. Furthermore, the extra boxes can be used to trap invasive starlings and house sparrows to protect your flycatchers. Locate the nest box in the open away from tree branches. Predators can use branches to drop or jump to the box. 
The habitat surrounding the nest box should contain mature trees. Because the hold of the nest box is two inches in diameter, the invasive starling and house sparrow can unfortunately enter. Be prepared to trap house sparrows. They will destroy the nest of the flycatchers. Learn how to use a nest box trap to catch house sparrows by following the link at the top of the video. Starlings will compete with flycatchers and destroy their nest. Be prepared to trap them as well. Learn how to use a nest box trap to catch starlings by following the link at the top of the video. Be sure to include a baffle on the pole to protect the nest box from climbing predators. I've had flycatchers attempt nesting in my Topeka yard every year from 2011 to 2019 until I moved in 2020. But don't think it's as simple as just putting up a nest box. I experienced a number of problems that you should be prepared for. Every year I had to trap starlings that tried to nest in the boxes. They are an incredibly aggressive invasive species. I've had squirrels chew up the nest boxes because the pole was missing a baffle. Don't skimp on a baffle. The first year I hosted them, I saw them trying to enter a one and a half inch diameter hole to a bluebird box. I took the box down, enlarged the hole, and put it back up. I went off to run errands, and when I returned, they were nest building. They nested successfully and fledged their young. The next year, a male house sparrow showed interest in their nest box. I thought they were big enough to defend their nest against him. I was wrong. He destroyed their nest. I trapped the house sparrow, but the flycatchers never returned. In the following four years, they raised a brood and fledged the young, mostly because I was trapping starlings and house sparrows. The next year, all the eggs disappeared before hatching. I think an avian predator ate them. The following year, they nested successfully. The year after that was a failure because the nestlings all died in the nest box. I think parasites may have killed them. Overall, the flycatchers were quite successful and fledged many young in my Topeka yard. I have yet to attract nesting flycatchers to my South Dakota property, but they are uncommon here and elsewhere, as can be seen on the range map in the video description. Let's learn about nest building. Only the female gathers nesting materials, but the male watches over her and protects her as she works. Watching them build their nest may be my favorite part of hosting them. Let's look at their nest to learn about its characteristics. The base of the nest is generally leaf litter. They always build the cup of the nest in the back of the nest box. Once the nest is finished, they search for animal fur to line the nest cup. And they almost always decorate the nest with a shed snake skin. The nest generally contains five to six eggs when she is done laying. Don't you just love all of the decorations used in the nest? Once the eggs hatch, the parents continue to bring insects to feed the nestlings. These are newly hatched flycatchers. After a few days, you can see that they have grown. Three more days have passed and they are getting feathers. After three more days, they are bigger and have more feathers. Three days later and they are beginning to look like flycatchers. This is the last image of them in the nest as they are ready to fledge. Here we have a parent trying to coax a young bird to exit the nest. Because the parents are withholding food, we get to watch this young flycatcher take its first flight. Once the nestlings leave the nest, they never return to it. That concludes the nesting of a pair of great crested flycatchers. I hope you enjoyed learning about hosting nesting flycatchers. You should have enough information to provide a place for them to nest. If you have questions or comments, leave a message in the comments below the video. I hope you are successful at attracting flycatchers to nest in your yard. It is such a satisfying experience to watch them build their nest, feed their young, and finally leave the nest. Hi, it's Jeff with the Backyard Birds channel. If you like this video and want to see more like it, consider subscribing to my channel. Just click the red subscribe button below the video. To be notified of new videos, be sure to click the bell widget next to the subscribe button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on the Backyard Birds channel.